So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very interesting video today about why men are walking away from marriage and why actually most people, regardless of men or women, are becoming disinterested in the area of marriage. And we're going to look at this through astrological perspective, especially Vedic astrological perspective, not the astrological perspective, which is extremely simple. And this is something that I got interested, uh, that got me interested in when somebody I did a reading to gave me, send me a link, say, what do you think about this? And he sent me a link of some guy from New Jersey. I don't know. I forgot the name. Uh, but it was him reviewing all these TikTok videos of why women are upset that no man is approaching them. No man is wanting to date them. Not only that, men want the women to pay for their dates and dinner. And then, of course, you know what happens. You watch one video, whether it's TikTok or <laughs> YouTube. Now, suddenly, you get recommended with nothing but those type of videos. So, okay, fine. I just got interested and I'm like watching another video, another video, another video, another video. I get that sense. And then, of course, my brain is working towards how... Why is this happening astrologically? And the first thing that came to me, came to my head, was actually numerology. How numerology is playing, playing a big part in this. Okay? And first of all, as always, if you don't know what your birth chart is, some of the things that I'm going to show you here through my iPad, uh, you can check out the links here, karisastrology.com where you'll find my books, reports, consultations, and link to my academy, Maga Vedic Astrology Academy, where I'm currently teaching some of these things that I'm actually showing here. It is so easy within five seconds. Five seconds, three seconds, you'll know. You look at a chart, maybe sometimes it'll take you two seconds over time. So I'm doing that in my Nandi Nadi course on my academy. But the very first thing that I wanted to discuss is the numerological aspect. Because what happens from 1999 onwards? What came after 1999? 2000s. So from 2000 to 2099, what is the first two numbers? Two and zero. And then after 100 years, it'll be two and one. 2100, 2101, right? 2100 and 2102. What happens is, when we were before the millennium, when it was 19, 19 something, I don't care, you pick the year, 1982, 1985. Yes, there are people who had the combinations that they will not get married. Okay, that's different because they were wanting to get married. Because of the fact you had one and you had nine, you had a king, you had a general. Two very masculine numbers. And the numbers that are wanting to take care and protect things. On a majority level, 90, 95% level, whoever was born, they're like, I need to nurture something. I need to take care of something more than even moon because one is sun, nine is Mars. Okay. Although nine can also be Ketu because it's the end. It's like that God number. That's why you don't even see Windows 9 and, and you know, uh, iPhone 9s. Because it's, the, it's that divine number. But 9, when we connect it with Mars, it's a masculine energy of the husband. 1 is the energy of the king. The king not only takes care of the queen, of course, prince and princess, but also the kingdom. They, they, they're they born with that genetic code that you're here that you need to take care of something. So it's inborn in people during that era that, wow, I can't wait to graduate from college, get a good job so I can just find the perfect woman, perfect man, and I want to take care of the family. Whether it's a man or woman, it's about wanting to take care of the family. I'm from that previous century of 1900s and my whole thing from childhood was when will I have a wife when will I have children 
oh, I'm going to do these things with my children. I'm going to do that with my children. I'm going to do, uh, I have, I will have this house and I will do this and this and I'll be a great father. That's the aspiration you grew up with. But as soon as 2000 hits, what happened? Number two and zero came in. Two is moon. Zero is naturally shunneta. Meaning it is this, it's, it's an egg. It's an egg that is just wanting to be either developed or get the prana to develop something. And two is moon. Two is controlled by moon. Now, what do you know about moon? We know about the sun. Comes on time, sets on time. No matter what's happening on this planet, you could have, be having a quadruple nuclear war. Sun does, will not care. Sun will still be rising and setting. But what happens with the moon? Moon is waxing and waning and there's no moon. And so it's the representation of our mindset. Here, what happens is with the people who are being born from 2000s all the way till 2099, and you'll have these small spurts, like for example, from 2000, 11 to 2019 okay then you'll have all these other blocks that i can actually go over but i don't want to go over that um their mindset is completely connected with moon one minute they're wanting a partner they're wanting thinking about the family but what happens the next day nah I'm not that much interested. The next day, oh, I'm not interested. By the time the moon is a no moon, they're like completely withdrawn. And this is the wavelength. When I watch these, <laughs> binge watch these videos of these TikTokers, um, it gave me a great sense of what is happening. Is that dating is going like this, and then suddenly it'll go like this. And then it'll suddenly go like this. And then suddenly go like, go like this. Suddenly go like this. And on the other end, majority of time, it'll be women who are frustrated. Like, what do you want? Do you want this to work or not? And even men are then confused. What is it that you want? And of course, with all the things that have happened since 2015 due to Harvey Weinstein, you know, um, it's like everybody's on edge. They don't want to be becoming the next Harvey Weinstein. That, 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 that 1999 and before era, you know, like, for example, back if you watched Bollywood movies, right? A girl is becoming shy in the song, wanting to leave, and the guy holds her hand, brings her back, you know, wanting to sniff her, or kiss her, or whatever. And then the girl likes it, but doesn't like it. Now it's just like, that fear is there. All these things that I was watching and I was connecting with it. So numerologically, that is the thing. This this hundred years is going to be um, very very, uh, very transformative in terms of what marriage is and what marriage means. When you get to twenty one hundred, it's going to get much much more subtle. It'll come back to that point again because then Mars comes into play. Which is, or, or I'm sorry, sun comes into play, 21. Because one is sun. So now people will be like, it's sun and moon energy both. They're like, we have got to come together to become mother and father again. We need to have children. I want to have children. I want to be that perfect parent. It'll be all about parenting, but it's going to be that far out. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to be this way, but that is the physics of uh, physics of numerology now once we get to the astrological point of view okay we're going to be looking at certain things astrological so if you know a vedic astrological chart i'm going to show you how um things take place okay um Hold on. Somebody was calling me on my iPad. How did I even get a call on my iPad? I don't even know. 
anyway so let me show you now okay especially for men so this is a vedic astrological chart these are your houses first house to fifth house to sixth house seventh house eighth house ninth house tenth house eleventh house twelfth house and of course this is the house of marriage okay so this is the house of marriage however i'm going to show you what is happening pick any house doesn't matter could be the seventh house sixth house eighth house first house it won't matter as much so let's say for example we put venus this is for men venus is in your first house why is it that you're either struggling for marriage or may not have any interest in marriage and long-term commitments it is going to be a very simple thing again no magic here it's just simple so for example this is your venus in the first house your venus actually could be anywhere venus could be here venus could be here venus could be here but what matters is how is this venus how is this venus breathing is it getting pure oxygen is it getting carbon dioxide or is it getting methane okay so let's just look at the venus in the first whenever you see venus like this you got saturn on one side mars on one side this is going to be the venus that is going to give this person frustration when it comes to meeting the right person sure there's remedies and you have to align yourself with whatever this venus wants and then you'll get the spouse okay and i've already discussed this in my nandi nadi course it's very simple but this is one thing you can also have rahu here saturn in the 12th house you can have ketu here same thing you can have sun same thing okay what i'm trying to say is that when venus is hemmed by malefics on two sides of the houses it is going to be a very problematic point of dealing or attaining the wife and especially for women as well this represents the bondage the venus for both men and women will represents the bondage and unionship so yeah venus in troubled area can still give a woman a marriage but that unionship that companionship now how is that that's where the trouble comes in also then oh my god i think stewie is crashing this carpet stewie so then you have this venus the other thing you can have is this you can have venus with ketu not only that you can have mars in the ninth and let's say venus is at 5 degrees ketu is at 2 degrees mars is at 7 degrees so if you look at the trine venus has ketu in front of itself mars behind itself again it brings that struggle to show that okay you're going to have bit of a hard time meeting the right person or meeting the person on time the other thing that you will also see again you can have ketu here you can have saturn here this again so now if let's say ketu is at 9 degrees saturn is at 7 degrees venus is at 2 degrees so that means the string becomes 
Venus, Saturn, and then Ketu. Meaning Venus is moving forward towards Saturn. Finding cold, dry, and deserty environment. And then Ketu is just simply blank desert. It's like a cemetery. It makes it very hard for you to find that some somebody over there. Again, you can find it. It's simple. Of how you align yourself with the individual. Okay. At the same time, let's say this Venus is right there in the Ascendant, in the sign of Aries. And if you have Jupiter here in the 6th house, Jupiter here in the 8th house, Jupiter here in the 4th house, Jupiter here in the 10th house. Again, is going to spell trouble and issues in finding the right person. These especially becomes a strong factor. Why? Because Venus is becoming 6th and Venus is becoming 8th from Jupiter. So if you know, you know, what Jupiter is and how Jupiter is going to, you know, behave, in concept of Nadi, you will understand. Wow, this is taking a long time. It usually should increase my eraser. Okay, anyway. So, this is the major issues that occur. Even if, let's say, Venus is at 15 degrees, and then you have Sun here, at 19 degrees. This is also going to be that issue of either wanting to be interested in marriage or being burned in trying to find the proper marriage. Now, after I showed you all of these things, okay, including one of the big ones that let me show you. Here's Venus. Now imagine, I don't care which house Venus is in. Venus is retrograde. That's another thing. I actually had a read, I, I did a reading maybe two weeks ago for somebody. Okay. And the way their alignment was, was pretty much similar to what I just showed you. Okay. I think they had Venus and then I believe Rahu was trying from Venus. They're like, I want to get married. I'm 34 years old, but I'm only wanting, what do they say? I'm only wanting a Hindu Brahman. That's it. I don't want anything else. Okay. So I'm looking at their chart and maybe they will comment on this. Probably won't unless they have a different name or something. I'm like, I don't know how to go about your reading. I'm like, I think what you just said and what I'm looking at the chart, I think you're just gonna be better off being single. Because you're not getting what you're hoping for. We all wish for many things. When we, especially when we were growing up watching all kinds of Hindi movies. We were so, this actress should be my wife. That actress should be my wife. That actress should be my wife. Great. It's, it's, it's a great desire to have. But in reality, what you're getting is nowhere else but here, your birth chart. That's the reality. And so when you are especially 34 and you're not finding anybody they're like we've been looking 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 N not nothing is happening please give me a remedy i'm like yeah i can give you a remedy it's the easiest remedy that no any astrologer will ever advise to you is the simplest thing and you'll get married just like that and not only that you'll get a lot of money i'm looking at the, his chart venus 
is trying from Rahu and Rahu has a higher degree. So let's say for example, Rahu is at 12, Venus is at nine. I'm like, find somebody of a completely different culture and ethnic background and your marriage will happen. Find somebody from a foreign place, marriage will happen. But they, they already set a um, stipulation on me. I need to get married, but it has to be a Hindu Brahmin. That's all I'm looking for. And then I'm like, and I just told this person, I don't know what you want me to say here. Because what you're looking for, then my consultation will be 10 seconds long. No, it's not happening. Sorry. The only way this marriage is going to happen if you align yourself with that Venus and that's it. But again, however your Jupiter is, ninth house is, how you grew up. Yeah, it is showing a conservative, you know, environment, an ecosystem that you grew up in. And that's what you're wanting. Nothing is wrong with that either. You should want that. But are you going to get it? No. Then that means what should you do? Stay single? Well, that's your choice. If you want to stay single because of the of your beliefs and your principles absolutely stick to your principles and that is who you are i'll actually respect you on that but if your absolute desire is that i want to have a marriage i want to have a wife then you're going to have to you're going to have to change i'm not brahma even brahma cannot change anything for you shiva cannot change anything for you so just like I did this, right? So let's say we erase this Venus, okay? We come back to the ladies. Let's say you're a female wanting to get married, okay? And you're on TikTok. Complaining about you're not finding the right person, right this, right that. All right. I got a very simple analysis and solution for you as well. We'll put Mars here. I'll put Mars here. And everything that I showed with Venus, use that with Mars. And that's why the struggle is there. But does that mean with that struggle, you cannot get married? No, you can. You just have to align. You have to align yourself that who you should meet, who should you be with. Okay. So for example, just give one example. Let's say Mars is at 10 degree and you have Saturn at 15 degrees. That means Mars is moving towards Saturn. And I've also had these readings as well. Oh, what happened? That I want somebody who's the same age as mine. The only proposals I'm getting is a guy who's seven, eight, nine years older than me. I do not want that at all. I want somebody either the same year, or maybe one year older. I can even accept a couple of years younger than me. And this was probably... I don't know, sometime last year, somewhere. I just remember subconsciously, maybe six, seven months ago. And there too, I'm like looking, I'm like, okay, so what do you want me to do here? I cannot do magic here. That I'm going to suddenly put your Saturn at four degrees or put Saturn in the back sign to have you marry a person near your age. Because Saturn is... Ahead of Mars, you're going to meet a husband who's going to be older. And you're getting all these nice proposals. And again, this is this is why that fate and destiny comes into play. That no astrologer can change. Nobody can change. If Brahma cannot change for you, if Shiva cannot change things for you. For example, when Moon went towards Shiva to get his curse off from Dakshina, Shiva couldn't do anything. Shiva said, the best I can do is you'll be full moon for one day or maybe like two and a half minutes. And then after that, you will wax and vein again. That's all I can do. Okay. And let me show you the other thing, especially related to men also. This also brings trouble in having a steady partner. 
wanting and needing a study partner. You have Venus and you can have Moon here. Moon, Moon, Moon. So that itself. Again, if you know the story of the Moon, you will realize what happens when it tries to get married. You probably will marry somebody with 27 personalities. <laughs> so, the, I mean, if you look at it, this is just the birth chart. I'm not, I don't need to look at Navamsha, nothing. If birth chart is not going to tell me something, it is, let's not even go there. But look how simple that was. How long did it take for you all to understand this? So, yeah, you have to add the factor of the, the numerological factor. And then the ones, people are going to get married. Every year, a lot of people are getting married. But the segment of people who are online, and then one thing I just don't understand is why do you have to cry about your personal life on social media when you're depressed or when you're having a bad date, bad relationship, bad breakup? It's all going to come back to haunt you. Stop putting this stuff on social media, on TikTok. Nobody wants to see a vulnerable person. We're all vulnerable. We all cry. I go in the closet and cry. I don't need to cry in front of TikTok. So again, it just is what it is because it's the 2000s. Anybody who was born after 2000, the emotions are so high, so vibrant, so visible. That it's like, for you, it's just natural that I want to put my emotions out there like the moon. Who waxes and wanes and everybody sees it. Now everybody needs to see me. That's what it is. And I hope you're going to watch my documentary that I just uploaded. My Homa. From big city to off-grid, living in isolation. Because I, I wanted to see a documentary like that and there was nowhere to be found. Maybe just one. And I'm like, I just want to see something like that. Just long, boring documentary about nothingness. Just being in the most dry state as possible. So yeah, that's why I made that. So hopefully you guys watch it and hopefully you guys may like it. Took me almost seven, eight months to make that thing. So anyway, this was our video. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below so you don't miss these type of videos. If you want to know everything about your chart, you can go to caresastrology.com here or go to careschannel.thinkific.com for my Nandinari course. So you just know once and for all how to see the align how to see the bad alignments and how to fix those alignments. Okay. Bye-bye.